A better way to think of the word normal is average. Business Brain, the Entrepreneur's Podcast, episode 402 for Wednesday, October 19th, 2022. Welcome to Business Brain, the show where we use our business brains every week, not only in our business, but throughout our lives. Sponsors for this episode include Shopify.com slash SBS, where you can go to get your 14-day trial and full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. We'll talk more about them in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Lafayette, California... I'm Shannon Jean. Happy to be here as always. Same. Good good stuff. Same. <laughs> I'm looking forward to an interesting show today. And I, I hope that uh, a lot of other people are as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you had this um, thing. I think you said it in the last episode. The, a, a sale is a successful transfer of enthusiasm to the customer, right? You said that in the last episode. I'm like, I don't, think I don't know if I said it. Show. Okay. I don't, did I say, I don't, I, I think, think you I did post it in our note. Okay. If I did say it. Yeah, I think so. I, 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 and I, I wanted to chat about it, but yeah. we, and I, we ran with another topic last week, but and we're going to be talking about some uh, habits that uh, will transform your life in six months. Um, uh, info that we want to share, but first, I, I think this is a really interesting comment and it, it embodies a lot of um, what we talk about on the show is how you're presenting things, the message you're getting, your story you're telling. And I think it doesn't just live in the realm of sales. I think it also lives in the customer service area. And you, one of your favorite terms, you know, is where all businesses are in the customer service business, but that, that transfer of enthusiasm. So if your people aren't enthusiasm or don't have enth enthusiasm about your product, your service, or they're not enthusiastic about solving problems for the customer, I think customers pick up on that pretty quick. I, yeah, I agree. And I, I have, uh, I need to do some research on this, but I, I have an asterisk that I might need to add to my statement that every business is in the customer service business. Ah, okay. And it, it might be in the United States. I, I'm oh, not, I'm not as convinced that like European businesses are as dependent on providing customer service as a primary uh, deliverable, if you will. I, I have a theory. I, I, I need to okay. research, but I've been dealing with more European sort of culture and businesses uh, lately. And it's like you like customer service doesn't have the same priority there that it that that I do. Uh, you, you know what I mean? And, and so yes. I don't know if it's just like it might just be the 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 very small subset you know that that i've experienced yeah. the 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 plural of anecdote is not data right <laughs> but right well i think you could also have an asterisk as you're discussing this and thinking about it cuz i've been dealing with some pretty large entities lately um the larger you are the less important it is uh because I would say I would say maybe the less it's applied, I would still argue it's okay, always the less important. It's applied. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, it is important. I, I like that. Yeah, no, you're right. The less it's uh, this whole concept is embraced because, like, yeah. you know, call somebody at Google when you have a problem uh, with your business <laughs> listing. You yeah, know, customer service at somebody, Facebook is awful. Yes, reach out to somebody at Facebook when you have a problem with a business setup or different things like that. They, they just ignore you. Yeah. Uh, Google you is, any, is yeah. eons better than Facebook, by the way. But yeah, uh, but your point know. doesn't, that doesn't negate your point. <laughs> they're, they're, no, they're both no. terrible compared to small businesses or even medium. Yeah. They don't businesses. have to be. And that, and that's your, your strength and what you yeah. have to push, I think over an Amazon or a huge company that you may be competing with is that, Hey, you know, we're, we're real people here on the ground and, you know, we're here to help you and solve your problems and we're not going to give you the runaround and to focus on that. That is a successful transfer of enthusiasm that we're, we're excited that, about the fact that you can interact. And when you call us, you'll get a human being on the phone yeah. that will help, will help you quickly. Uh, just don't, don't forget that. Keep, keep pushing that story out there because it's, uh, it's authentic. No, I, I, and I love this idea because it, it frames sales 
for me too. I mean, this is definitely something I do naturally. I am an enthusiastic communicator. Uh, and I, I, I can just sort of ooze enthusiasm naturally. And I, I believe that's one of the sort of cornerstones of why I don't have to live in a cardboard box, for example. Like, <laughs> I, I really do. Like, yeah, I, I'm, I I'm, I I'm aware of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's fine. Um, but it, it's just, you know, there's there's what we'll call. I don't even want the word talent to apply. There is natural traits. Uh it, you know, and I, I think about this happens in the music world all the time. You say, well, that person's a natural. It's like, okay, well, yeah, they might have some predisposition to being ready to play some kind of instrument. Like they, like maybe their their fingers are long and that means that playing guitar or piano is helpful or, you know, what like or the way they think helps them do this. And that's great. Okay. But you still yeah. It doesn't mean that they are just immediately an expert, right? It's you still need to hone your craft, practice, be aware of what it is you are trying to improve so that you can improve. And this statement, a sale is a successful transfer of enthusiasm to the customer really resonated with me because I don't think about this as much as I could. I, it's something I do. Yes. But I've never like when I saw those words or heard those words, it resonated with me because it was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Like I need to be more aware of how I do this and make sure that I'm doing it in the best ways. And it doesn't mean being inauthentic about it. It means honing my craft, practicing, making sure I'm not too enthusiastic and, you know, letting my enthusiasm run away with things and all of that. So I, like it's it I, I there's a lot to learn by sort of just being aware of this concept, I think. Well, and yeah. And, and one of the questions I had when I read it is what's more important, the enthusiasm you have or the skill to transfer it to your customer? Well, yeah, I think, I think the skill is uh, more important. I, th I think transfer, transfer you got to transfer it to your customer yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. So you can teach. So, if the, if somebody's enthusiastic about it, they love it, but they don't have that skill set to to get somebody else excited about it, they're not going to be as successful. If no. somebody can maybe even fake it a little bit, like it's the what was that movie, The Wolf of Wall Street? We're like, sell me this pen, yeah. <laughs> you know, and and you go, okay, how do I pitch it? How do I you know try to sound as authentic as you can? And uh, yeah, so it's it's an interesting statement. I love it. I like yeah. It. Well, I mean, one way to start. If you can do it authentically, it, you know, just to take that example is to start by saying, I love this pen. Have I ever showed you this pen right now? You know, now I've expressed uh, support for it and now I'm engaging you, right? Like, have I ever, sh now you're going to, you're about to give me permission to, to show you this pen, right? So already we're working on stuff, but it starts with enthusiasm and then we add the skill part of softening a little bit and letting the person walk in as opposed to shoving the pen in their face. Yeah. Right. You know, there may be a little scarcity. I'm really not sure I can sell you this pen because it's the only one there is. And I've already told you it's my favorite pen. Like th yeah. this is already established. <laughs> like you start with that. This is, I love this pen, man. Gosh. Yeah. Hey, have I ever showed you this pen? You know, like that kind of thing. It's yeah, that absolutely. kind of thing can work. Yeah. 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 And as long as yeah. you can deliver it authentically. Now, Hopefully yes. you can deliver it in a way that is both perceived to be authentic and actually authentic. There are, there are some people with a great amount of skill at delivering what appears to be authentic uh, sales pitches, but are actually not authentic at all. And, and you've got to be able to, as a consumer, we have to be on the lookout for those things uh, because that's using our business brain right there. I think. <laughs> yes, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Let us know what you think, folks. Feedback at businessbrain.show. That's where you're going to uh, tell us your examples, your thoughts, anything. All right. So two friends are heading out and one of them says, let's go to this bar. I know they have the greatest punch. So they go to this bar. They say to the bartender, we want two glasses of your punch. And the bartender looks at them very sternly and says, if you want the punch, you're going to have to get in line like everybody else. And they looked around, but there was no punchline. You know what's not a joke 
is how simple it is, though, to start, run, and grow your business with Shopify, the all-in-one commerce platform. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. Whether your thing is vintage teas or recipes for ghee, start selling with Shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of your favorite businesses worldwide. Shannon and I have used Shopify in the past because it's so easy. You just create an online store in your vibe, discover new customers, and grow the following that keeps those customers coming back. Shopify has all the sales channels sorted from in-person POS to all-in-one e-commerce, 24-7 support. And this is how every minute new sellers around the world make their first sale on Shopify. And you will, too. Sign up for a free trial at Shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase. Go to Shopify.com slash SBS to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. So I found this. It's going to come as no great surprise to anybody who's listened to the show for more than about four minutes. Uh, I found this Twitter thread that caught my attention. Uh, it's by a guy named Ben Meir, M-E-E-R. But what I really love is his his Twitter handle. I actually don't know where it comes from, so I bring my own interpretation to this. It's His Twitter handle is at System Sunday. I like anything that's about systems, right? Because, like, mm-hmm, that's, you know. For sure. Right, yeah. Uh, the, na- the title of this thread was, is 14 rare habits that will transform your life in six months. So definitely clickbaity, but I read cause yes. you know, the clickbait All worked. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. If you can deliver on the clickbait, it's great. It's fine. Um, so he's got 14 of these things. I, I think the way I'd like to do this, Shannon is to, I'm going to read down sort of a very distilled, you know, 10 word or less, description of all 14 of them and then okay. you and i are gonna you're gonna you're gonna pick our favorites the the, the, the ones we want to talk about because we're not going to talk about all 14 so uh number one and i'm not saying these in ben's language i'm saying them is the way i uh, the way i interpreted them number one make no your default answer number two block time for deep work and you'll never worry about money again three Write down your beautiful life memories. Four, don't regret past decisions. Number five, the gift of goodbye. Number six, normalize saying, I don't know anything about that as a successful and complete answer. Number seven, don't watch bad movies or read bad books. Number eight, make decisions without your parents' approval. Number nine, don't check your phone first thing in the morning. Number 10, Learn to stand up for yourself without getting worked up. Number 11, make consistency your loudest statement. Number 12, take midday naps. Are there naps at other times of the day? Wouldn't that be just going to sleep? Anyway, uh, number 13, don't grocery shop on an empty stomach and don't believe what you think or feel unless you're in a peak mental state. And number 14, the last one, be weird. So I know I paraphrased some of those, but um, you did, yeah, yeah. There is some nuance to some of these that and are, are I definitely we, worth we're talking about. We dig into that <laughs> for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Where do you want to start? Yeah, it, I want to start at the start. I want Great. I want this concept of making no your default. And if you uh, if you come and look at the show notes at um, businessbrain dot show, you can click in and read some of the the nuance here. And you know, we always talk about. Uh, We've done shows about saying no and how important it is, but we've also talked a lot, probably a lot more about saying yes to trying new things, taking on new challenges, you know, really kind of embracing this uh, abundance thing. And, you know, Ben's comment with with this nuance, which I, I agree with it, with this little caveat is only say yes if you are, and he uses a little more colorful language, but only say yes if you are wildly enthusiastic about something yeah not just one more thing to add to your list of okay yeah i can help with that uh okay you know it those should be no's no i'm sorry i cannot do that uh but if you're if it really gets you excited or you think about uh a new thing you're going to learn or be challenged with um then i think the yes definitely the yes is appropriate yeah, I, I read this 
thinking because I this also was one I wanted to talk about. I read this as saying no to things that other people were asking me to do. Right. I, I was more thinking about it like in my in my, you know, world of, hey, someone here's an idea. Do you want to do this? Well, unless yeah. I'm like totally on board with it, it's it's a no. And it's it's just a True. function of yes. time. Right. Because time would agree. Time is is not something I can make more of. Right. I I I know ways of making less time. Right. So I try to keep myself as healthy as possible and like those sorts of things. But um but that's sort of how I looked at this was a time management thing and and deciding what your priorities are and sticking with them. Now, that doesn't mean saying no to everything, but it means being careful what you add to that list. But to your point, that can you need you need to be careful about that, too, because you can easily convince yourself that every opportunity is too much of a hassle. Or well, not. you shut down, and yeah, and it also yeah. Can help, it can limit your network of connections. Like yes, maybe we don't have time. I'm not. When I read this, I'm like, well, you know, six habits or 14 habits transform your life in six months. I often go, now nah, <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. I don't have time to read that. But because you recommended it, uh, it was more credible. So you know, uh, even being on Twitter, I would sometimes question whether it's good for your productivity. But you meet. You know, or you connect with other people and follow folks like Ben that have have you know unique takes on things. So yeah. um, I'm I'm a I'm about a I'm not wildly enthusiastic about number one. Yeah, but uh, I understand it and, and I agree with parts of it. I, I'm going to jump down to what I call number seven, which uh, he says is uh, his words were normalize not finishing the book or movie if it sucks. I have to, this, this is something we implemented in our home probably 10 years ago, and we call it the 20 minute rule. I think I've even talked about it on the show before. If I haven't, I'm surprised. The 20 minute rule is if we're 20 minutes in to a movie and we realize that, you know, we're all just like lost in our phones and, and yeah. paying attention, <laughs> I was say. right. You, you know, like yeah. there's, there's a couple of, or if we're just talking over it and not talking about it, because some movies, it actually works to just have an ongoing conversation sort of through the movie. That's fine. If that's okay. Uh, not in the theater probably, but you know, at home or whatever. But if we notice 20 minutes in that, it's not, it's not happening. We turn it off that, and it's, this was a great way for my kids to learn about the concept of sunk costs and also yeah. a way for me to reinforce that concept with myself. And that, I think, is the valuable part here. Actually, I think both parts are valuable. You just, you know, if, if you cut off a movie 20 minutes in, you just saved yourself somewhere between 70 oh. and 90 minutes of yeah. of yep. of wasted time. Like you could start another movie now. Right. Could, you know, yeah. you go to. Well, that one didn't work out. Let's try the next one. OK, that's great. And we are in a world of abundance when it comes to content. But so there's that benefit, this sort of, uh, you know, face value benefit. But deeper down, this idea of, hey, I'm I'm doing something. I said yes to this. I thought it was a great idea. I, it turns out I was wrong. I'm proving to myself that I was wrong. Let's bail on this. And that's the idea of sunk costs. And it's it's also the idea of not believing your past self, right? Like your past self doesn't just get carte blanche to say, I'm right 100% of the time. You made the decision you made. It was fine. You, you did it with all the information you had. You started moving forward. That gave you more information. Oh, crap. This was wrong. All right. You know what? Let's bail. It's fine. That's all good. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's a, I think it's a valuable yeah. skill. Yeah. It is. It is. And it, and it rolls right into another one I really like is his normalized, not regretting past decisions. Like you said, the, the fallacy of sunk cost. Yeah. Uh, getting comfortable with that. It, it, it's really a, a great, you know, tactic um, to make as part of your own system is knowing that, you know what, no matter how much time you have to do it, and often no matter how much money you've invested, if things look at some point, if things don't look good and, you know, you've got to either pivot and hopefully use the resources that you acquired during all that work to maybe do something else. You know, I, I wrote a book based on 
content I'd created to start a business that went south. And I said, well, I have all this content. Now I'll public. Let me just publish a book. Yeah. And it turned out great. And that was awesome. Um, but it was a very expensive book for me to publish. Um, <laughs> but at least now I can say. <laughs> you got <laughs> some well, value. You, know. you, you, yeah. Yes, that's I right. Did. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, so that is, and we talk about that on the show a lot. And I, I, I I'm fully on board with, uh, you know, get not regretting past decisions. It's really, really important. I agree. I agree. Yeah, no, it's good. I, this, um, this number three, the write down your beautiful life memories. That was, that's an, that's something that I've been thinking more about recently. And it's this whole, uh, let, let me, the way he put it together, uh, was, Oh, where am I here? I got lost. Uh, Normalize writing down your beautiful life memories, the best tacos ever, the presentation you crushed, bonfire with friends, save the memory. And one day the memory might save you. I think I don't I don't even think it's one day. I think it's, you know, when you log something, when you write something down, when you tell someone about it, it reinforces that in you. Right. How important this was like, wow, these really were good tacos or, you know, I really enjoyed just hanging out and having lunch together. This was great. Saying that to someone without even writing it down sort of reinforces it. And to me, that really helps me say, OK, yeah, like, I, yes, I spend when I'm working, I'm into it, you know, and I, I definitely have to say no to some things because I'm choosing to work. But then there's the times where I, say, I can say I can put work, you know, here I'm finished with this. Now I'm going to go enjoy these things. And some of the th the memories that I write down are about work, but not all of them. And just, you know. Showing that I am enjoying and uh, more than enjoying appreciating the the little things, the moments in life, I, I'm I'm finding that important. Maybe it's just because I'm getting old. I don't know. Whatever. But, yeah, I, you know. I do think that's a function of of age and look at you know looking back and Wisdom. appreciating those kinds of things. When yeah. you're, uh, you know, what I find interesting is this. It it's kind of uh, weird that he has this thing. Don't. Uh, don't listen to your parents or don't worry about what your parents think. And yeah. at the same time, he's got this other comment about beautiful life memories, which is typically kind of an older person where yeah. the parents think is like maybe in your twenties. So it's kind of, it's kind of weird. Um, I do, um, I, I, I do agree with that. You do need to recognize those things and be in the moment perhaps yeah. more. That's, that's right? a good way of, of phrasing it. Yeah. I like that. Like I love doing this show, but and like I have, I have so much going on right now. It's ridiculous. And I'm in the middle of a helping on a, a school board campaign. I've got some other business stuff. We're getting towards the end of the year and it's just, it's, it's nuts. Uh, it's very productive, but it's, it's crazy. But once I, you know, put my earbuds in and grab the microphone and we start talking, I love it because to me, you know, we had people over my house Friday night and mom talking and a couple of business guys, a guy who used to be my attorney. I could, I told the, those both of them there, I go, you know, if we had a microphone, we could just record a show right here because this is what I talk about. This is <laughs> and, it. And I yeah. love doing it. And I, I love the fact that it's recorded. Maybe someday my kids will listen to it and I can give it to them on a drive or on a, yeah. you know, some, some kind of thing and hear me talking and, and uh, how much I enjoy that, that thing. So I do value that. I don't know if writing them down is the way I would do it, but I do, you know, definitely be in the moment. Is yeah, important. acknowledging them and don't just, yeah. you know, not letting them just simply pass by. Yeah. 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 Isn't, I, I, the, isn't it the Buddhists or something that say like craving is the big enemy of happiness, right? And so... Yeah, I, I mean, I've definitely found, maybe all of us have found that while you're doing something, you're th already thinking about, oh, I got to do the next thing yeah. and I got to do the next thing. And it's like, well, maybe just chill and, and, uh, and slow down. So be present. And, and, yeah. 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 Be present. Which brings me to one that I really like, especially I'm, it's hard, but I really like is don't check your phone first thing in the morning. And, and I, you know, I've really started thinking about, um, and maybe it's just cause it rhymes, but I love the concept of no phone Friday, um, and being able to just leave it and, uh, you know, not worry about it, but certainly it, w people keep their phones next to their bed now, to, you know, alarm, all that kind of stuff, um, rolling over and grabbing your phone and, and ingesting the, the stuff that it's going to push your way. I don't think it's a good idea. 
No, it, it's not. I had an interesting experience, experience today that I was thinking about in the 10 minutes that I had between the last podcast I recorded <laughs> and this one. And prior to that was even less time between the first podcast and the second one that I did for the day. So my afternoon has been uh, consumed with me being effectively heads down and shut off from the world. Right. You know, because I'm, I'm doing these shows, I really do try not to check my email and such while we're recording. I sometimes fail at this. You folks who listen probably know when those failures are happening. Uh, but be that as it may, I try not to. And today I, I mostly succeeded because I had to. The, the shows that I was recording earlier today were like, as with this one, like I have to be involved. I, I can't just sit there and be a fly on the wall. And um, it hit me. It's like, you know, I was super productive this morning because I knew I wouldn't be able to like do any of my project style or response style work this afternoon because here I am recording these three shows back to back to back. Right. And I thought, you know, when I don't when I have these shows, I feel zero like guilt or uh, drive to make sure I'm caught up on what's happening with, you know, in my email or, or with my Slack messages or, I mean, if somebody really needs to get my attention, the people that would need to do that, know how to do that. Right. And, and, and they, they only use those methods when, you know, when it, when they realize I'm not around, uh, but having that in place, knowing that people can find me, I don't feel like, I'm working this afternoon. I'm doing these three shows. And so I don't feel like, well, I'm shirking my responsibilities by not checking my email obsessively like I would, you know, if I was at my desk. And as I was before we recorded this episode, I thought, man, I got to figure out how to do that when I'm not recording, it, it, you know, like I was productive today. I don't feel like I missed out on anything today because I was you know, involved, I, like I need to compartmentalize my day better and take yeah. advantage of what I already know to be true, that I can get the stuff done that I need to get done. And then I can spend time on, on project work, which is, you know, what, what these things are in their own way, like heads down, not checking in with the world, you know, for hours at a time. Like it, it turns out everything's kind of okay when I do that. And I, I need to learn this lesson from myself that I already employ I just need to do it more. I don't yeah. know. Uh, does what I'm saying yes. make any sense? Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. it yeah. It's uh these are very introspective yeah. comments and and tips and questions. So it's not something that um you can just kind of drill right into and go, yes, A and B and then C is the uh you know the the outcome. So definitely worth digging into and trying to figure it out. Um I do like Ben's comment, this gift of goodbye. And from a business perspective, my gift of of goodbye document uh, is really interesting, and I'd love to talk about it and you know get your take on it. Hey, are you someone who runs a service based business? If you're ready to scale that business, then we have a podcast for you. It's the Freelance to Founder Show. You know how your entire business can often get hung up on just one or two problems that you can't seem to solve? Right. Like if you just could solve this one thing, you can finally move your business forward. Freelance to Founder helps you make real progress in your business. It's a top rated weekly show co-hosted by Clay and Preston, who have both previously started, grown and sold their own businesses. And now they offer free weekly coaching calls to freelancers, small business owners and agency builders, helping them overcome their biggest hurdles and make real progress in their businesses. You can even join them for your own coaching call to listen. Just search freelance to founder wherever you get your podcasts or visit freelance to founder.com. That's freelance to founder on Apple podcasts or wherever you choose to listen, start breaking down barriers and making real progress in your small business with the must listen show freelance to founder. And our thanks to Clay and Preston for doing this swap with us. All right, man, the gift of goodbye. Yeah. And I, I like this concept. I mean, I, I've always, 
told people if there's vampires in your life, you know, you got to get rid of them. People that are not helping you succeed. But <laughs> we have we have a song yeah. in in the one of the bands I play in, Bitter Pill, called yeah. "Too Many Vampires," and it's exactly yeah. that. Yes, it'll wipe you out. Yeah. But on a, I, I get frequently approached with a business idea. Somebody wants to work, you know, quote, work with me, uh, see if we can develop a, you know, this thing. And I, and sometimes I am pretty enthusiastic about it, but I'm also very realistic about it because I've, uh, I've seen this movie before. And if, if it's someone new that I don't know, and I'm not sure my gift of goodbye is the working agreement. And I, if you haven't, heard me talk about the working agreement on the show. We'll, we'll put something in the show notes at, at uh, businessbrain.show. But the working agreement really is the start of, okay, this idea is great, but how is it going to work? And who's going to do what? And, and what is your concept? And the first part of the working agreement, it's, it's critically important. It's not a contract. It's not a business plan. But the first part is a test. Can you give them the blank template of the working agreement, which you can download at the businessbrain.show, and then have them take the time to fill it out, ask you some questions, perhaps clarification, and bring it back to you. And I'm shocked that how many people don't bring it back because it's, oh, wow, actually, you're not going to take it and run with this and develop everything. And then I'll just kind of get to hang on uh, like a like a tiger, you know, hold a tiger by the, by the yeah. tail. So so it is a, a, a method to, you know, this gift of goodbye concept of, OK, I'm interested, but here it is. Now, go away. Prove to me that you want to put some effort into it and that you've thought about this and you can lay this out. And if they do come back, usually you can, you know, it, you, you stand a much better chance of being successful. Well, you know, because you're already working together. Like it's it, it like it, yeah. you said it's a test, which right. is true, but it's it's a practical test. You're actually seeing how you can work together. The working agreement itself is a project that you're doing together. And it's it's a great one. Yeah. If they're not engaged, man, go pull that ripcord hard. Yeah, <laughs> and and, and the beauty of the working agreement is the ripcord is built into it. You don't have to be the one to say yes. this isn't working. You can just look at the, the development of the working agreement and say, yeah, look, this what we've built here isn't really going to like it's pretty clear, obvious, I think, to both of us that this isn't going to work out. You know, this project doesn't it, it, we don't have yeah, the right it, mix. That's right. And sometimes you are the one that ha like if you're pitching it to someone and you trying to get something going on, then you're in charge. OK, let me lay out the the basic structure of how this this agreement uh, would work and this concept, then you give it to them. And then hopefully they are tweaking it a bit and talking about, oh, how revenue would work and who invests what and how, how yeah. you know, the, all this kind of stuff. So it, it it's a, a good system to see if you can even get past that, yep. um, which, which I think it's great. The next one for me is this uh, normalize. I don't know anything about that as a successful answer. And that I actually quoted directly from his tweet. Uh, and I, I can't stress how important this has been to my life. You know, I am a nerd. I am the guy who fixes everybody's computers and everything else. People come to me, they ask for advice. You know, I'm pretty good at solving things. I'm pretty good at sussing things out. And I know a lot about, I know a little bit about a lot of things. <laughs> there are a few things yeah. I know a lot about, you know, but, I, but I, I like to educate myself about just random things. And so I tend to know a little bit, but it's easy for me to get caught in the trap of, well, because I know a little bit about this, someone asked me a question yeah. Can I, you know, I don't want to admit that I don't know more. And, and I've, I've learned to stop myself there and say, well, I don't, yeah, I don't know anything about that. That's, that's outside of my area of expertise and that's okay. Like say, simply saying, I think, I think this should be distilled down even further and it's, I don't know. It's okay to say, I don't know. That's not a sign of weakness. That's a sign of confidence because it shows that you're willing to admit that someone might know more than you, which, hey, guess what? They do. Like, <laughs> like yeah. the, the I, truth I really is like, out there. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I like the, the the phrase you used. I don't know if you did it on the air or after shows that I've told you more than I know. <laughs> That's and true. I, yeah. I, it's great. It's like, okay, yeah, I'd like to tell more, and, and but I, that's it. I'm, I'm, I've told you more than I know. I, think I told you more than I know. I, I, I got that's that from John Martellero, who worked with us for years over at the mm. Mac Observer. And uh, and it was that was a catchphrase of his, but like, but he meant it every time he said it. It's like, okay, wait, wait, yeah. wait, wait. I've told you more than I know. I, like, I'm, I'm talking out of my ass here. I don't know. Like, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it happens. Uh, it, it does. It does. Um, one of my really do like, and uh, it's it's his last one, and I'm I'm going to tweak it a little bit. Of course, he, he says normalize being weird, yeah, uh, and I I I do really like that, but I think the word for me is normalize being unique. I don't think you have to be weird, but you have to be unique, and and it's all just you know subjective. That's I, semantics. I yeah. Yeah, 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 semantics. But um, there's you know weird unique that's how you're going to be remembered and maybe when you're younger you're trying to fit in it's a little bit tougher yeah. and uh along those and so you you may have a harder time but that also kind of that builds character and teaches you just you, maybe you've got to strive a little harder um and but as you get older being unique slash weird can really pay off because people remember you more. Uh, you're not just like everybody else. Hopefully your business isn't just like everybody else. You don't think like everyone else. That's why you're hopefully listening to the show because you've got a business brain and things come to you in a little bit different flow than let's call them W2 earners, which are awesome people. And we need to hire those folks and they have great lives and some become super wealthy, far wealthier than I am. Yeah. But yeah. We, yeah, yeah. We, we, <laughs> and that's, that's, God, that's it, awesome for them. No, it's fascinating it me. to me because I've encountered those scenarios where, you know, you're among a, let's say a neighborhood ish type of group and people are like, Oh yeah. You know, well, Bill works for, a, you know, a hedge fund or whatever, but, but Dave owns his own business. So Dave, Dave's the, you know, send the check to Dave. And it's like, um, I'm pretty sure Bill beats me in every way, shape and form when it comes to earning and wealth building and all that stuff. <laughs> but yeah, people, yeah. people assume that the business owner is just the, the wealthiest person. And I agree, but it's not always wealthiest from a cash standpoint, but it's that, you know, that's my perspective on life. I'm patently unemployable. Bill, the guy that, you know, works W2 wage for a hedge fund. He's happy being an employee oh, and it works absolutely. for him. And, yeah. you know, like, I don't judge yeah. that at all. I couldn't do no. it. But that's no. that doesn't mean I think he shouldn't, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we all have that unique part and yeah. you need different aspects. You know, one of the are. things I. Yeah. 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 But but I think the key is to is embrace it. Um, yeah. You want to stand out a little bit. You want to. um be able to do some things that other people can't talk like other people don't. Um, and, uh, you know, one of the things I always used to do at job interviews, because we would always interview a lot of people. And I, I think I have a pretty wide bandwidth, but my memory is not that great. Uh, and I would always ask them what is at the end of the interview, we'd have a few people in the room and I would say, okay, Hey, I'm going to interview a bunch of people. What's, what should I remember about you? What yeah. one thing? Yep. And, they would tell me something often that they had not mentioned in the rest of the interview. Uh, you know, oh, I'm a I'm a model train guy and I do this. And so I can remember, I, I'm sure I've mentioned this on the show before, this technician and thinking, wow, this guy works on little tiny trains. He's probably a pretty good tech, you know, yeah. does all these kind of things. And other things that people have said over the years that I still remember... Um, because they're unique and maybe sometimes a little weird. So oh, I, 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 uh, my I'm, way I'm all of, in on that one. My way of asking that question is, uh, you know, I, I set it up by saying, listen, we're all nerds here um, about different things. What are you a nerd about? And as long as someone is comfortable, you will always get an answer to that question. It will you will often have to cut them off after 10, 15, 20 minutes, because if they're a nerd about it, you know how we all are. Yeah. You, you know, like you and me, we're nerds about a lot of things. But one thing we have in common is business brain, like applying right. our business brain. So this is why we can talk about this for hours at a time. We carve it down to about 40 minutes a week. But, you know, it wouldn't like you were saying before, it doesn't stop us. 
So, uh, it, you know, it, that is where you learn who someone is, I think, it, you know, is that part of the interview. So, yeah, I know. Be weird. I, I, it's hard. You're right. It, it's, uh, it's something most of us have to work to learn to embrace. Not everybody. Some, some people can just, you know, are just comfortable yeah. with, with themselves. But it, it really is that. It's get comfortable with who you are and then be you. And, and and if and, that means you're weird, also, fine. But that's not your uh, yes. description. That's just it's, right. It's just how it is. Yeah. I, and I, I do think there's uh, again, like a lot of these, there's some nuance there. You, you want to be weird, but I, I want you to also be productive. And maybe yeah. being weirdly productive is your thing. Who knows? Uh, or you know, uh, whatever it is, it's not just like oh, I'm. Uh, you know, whatever, I'm going to shave my head or cut half my hair off or pink, or I don't, whatever you, you know, to make yourself stand out. Well, that's cool. That's fine. And I respect that. But when you're talking about being successful, which is what Ben Mir is, uh, and being weird in the realm of being successful, yeah. that's the important thing to embrace. I heard it. I heard something years ago that, um, the, the difference between crazy and eccentric is the number of zeros on your net worth, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Well, there's that, there's, yeah, and the uh, the high school, you know, when I, my kids went to this private high school and they always bring you and ask you for money and everything. And we're yeah. talking about grades because I'm like, you know, I was not a good student. And he goes, oh, you know what? The A students here are really important and they, they're great and give us good reputation. And the B students, man, they just grind it out and they're the ones that get everything done. And then he goes, but you know, the C students are the ones that get their names on buildings. Yeah. Because they're different. <laughs> and they're, and they, yeah. So it's yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah these are great if, tips. If man. you're normal, you know, normal, a better way to think of the word normal is average. Now, uh, no one ooh. wants to be average. Most of us are because that's the definition of the word average, right? But yeah, yeah. it does have this negative connotation for people who want to differentiate themselves, which is probably most of us here in the business brain family. So I think don't think about change the lang the internal dialogue from normal to average, and you'll probably be uh, a little more incentivized to get stuff done. Yeah. I love it. Same. Great tip. There's a bunch of them we didn't get to. We'll link to uh, we'll link to this in the show notes, as Shannon said. Because uh, and, and the reason we didn't get to them is because we picked the ones that were important to us, <laughs> the ones that spoke to us. Yeah. But there are other ones that we didn't get to. We might get to them someday. I don't know. Anything else, my friend? We good? No, I love it. These are great. Uh, you know, we go back and forth, super practical episodes, and then these are kind of squishier, but equally important. So I think it's a great mix. I Thank like you it. for listening. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you again. Feedback at businessbrain.show is a great place to get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Go check out shopify.com slash SBS and keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next time.